Hello, my name is Michelle Hess and I am from Portland Community College. And today we're going to talk about student peer review as a way to update, maintain, and improve open educational materials. So those open educational materials were also created by students, authored by students. So we'll first talk a little bit about that, uh, about chapter or partial chapter creation, and then the peer review process to update those materials. Okay, so open it just a little bit about open education. I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but it's it's great. It it challenges the dominant culture because it still shows up in our OER texts. OER texts are often written by just a few voices. So one of the great things about open education and allowing students to write curriculum is or write content, I should say, is students are authors. They can use that authorship on resumes. They are empowered and we get a lot of voices. We have a lot more diversity in our voices of the materials after they write them. The other thing is it pushes back on disposable assignments. Um, so legacy assignments are those, and there's a link here if you want to look at it. Those legacy assignments, the assignments live on, right? So the, what's created by the students are used by future students or maybe even out on Creative Commons or on the web. So maybe used by the population as a whole. And one last piece is this is a great practice for instructors to allow students to uh, help with the content because it decenters the instructor, right? We are not the pinnacle of knowledge anymore. The students, the students are there with us on that level playing field, which is great for us, great practice for us. Okay, so here are a few examples of the students being authors, writing chapter or parts of chapters. And in this case, we are challenging the concept that there is a binary sex or binary gender that is so pervasive in our textbook. So students have written a couple chapters here. Just one example of things that we can do to rewrite those textbooks. Here are a couple of examples of the first chapter, the introductory chapter that we all have in our textbooks about the historical piece of whatever subject we're teaching. So in this case, it's genetics which is no different, is racist in most textbooks. So students have that opportunity to rewrite that. And this is a super, power, this is super powerful for, for students to do this and, and really allows us to have a breadth of the history in our, in our subject matter. Okay, one more, one more push on chapter creation. Students are so funny. And they have they use humor, they know how to make the information relevant for future students. So those students really want to read it. <laughs> it's so great. And then uh, you can also see there's a link here for just some details, project details for how I get students to write those chapters in the very beginning. So this isn't about peer review, but I just threw that in there just in case that's helpful. Okay. Here we are talking about peer review. So you have these partial chapters that have been created by your students. Now what we can do and what we can see is that we can update the terminology and language by, by current students from the previous, previous students work. We're gonna have up-to-date content. We're empowering these students again. So these students are authors critiquing and editing and um, modifying previous works. And so we also will find that our information is not only updated, but also edited and, and corrected as we go along. Okay, so as we start getting into the logistics involved in peer review, what we're gonna be doing is the, the instructor is gonna organize the previous material, so the material that was created by former students, so that the new students can critique it. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can do it individually, a student can individually critique uh, um, a paper or a partial chapter. You can see that here as an example two. I actually prefer example one, and I'm, I'm actually gonna go through it on the next slide, where a group, the whole, and I actually have the whole class, critique maybe five or six different partial chapters at a time. And so what then what'll happen is we'll have a bunch of critiques from the whole class, right? So the whole class will critique let's say a partial chapter, and I'll usually have like five examples and you can pick from which one you want to critique. Now I've got a bunch of critiques and in the next 
iteration of the class or even further along in the class, you can have one student take all the critiques from a for a particular paper or a particular partial chapter and have them infuse all of that, all of those ideas into that chapter. So that's been a really, that's been powerful for me. I'll, let me show you that on the next slide. Here are the logistics. So we can see here on, I believe it's gonna be the left side of your screen. This is the peer review assignment. So you'll have four or five or however many you want of these partial chapters that have been written by, or whole chapters that have been written by former students. So those are what are going to be critiqued by the whole class. They can choose whichever one they want. They'll go ahead and put those critiques up. Then what you'll have are the whole class will have already critiqued. And you also have several critiques for each one of these partial chapters. So either, so the next iteration, so it can either be later on in that class or the future class, the next class, they can take all of these critiques put all of that content, all of those edits into the former material and they can critique it themselves as well. So really, this has been really powerful and a great way to, to slowly update all of the material that has been written by, by students. And I wanted to say thank you to Open Oregon for funding my work and the good work of those using open educational resources in the state of Oregon. Thank you so much.